I was in a very volatile way at that time and my self-harm was out of control. And so I think what helped was that it never phased her, it never scared her, it was not something that she'd not seen before, so she was fine with it. Um, she was very delicate in the way that she dealt with it. Her language was um, incredibly considered. That was one of the things that I really noticed with her is that she didn't um, she didn't use language that other people did. Um, she actually used to get really angry when I'd call myself crazy um, and say, don't use that word. But she just knew what she was doing and she'd done it for a long time. And she had all of that... Um, those internal boundaries there. She had boundaries and, and really clear boundaries. Um, and she knew all my tricks and she dealt with them before. So, you know, she would outwardly say to me, you know, I, you're trying to test how far I'm gonna go and I'm telling you that this is where I'm gonna go and that's not gonna change. And then I started to realize that boundaries are safety, actually, and that I really like boundaries, even though I didn't think I did. Um, but it was just her experience and just the fact that I never got the feeling that I was too much for her, that I was too complex. You know, she was also very, um, very strong about continuity of care. So she was really aware that she needed to be there and that, and so she was able to give me a really firm commitment and say, look, I'm not gonna go anywhere for this period of time. And she didn't. Um, so I think there were a lot of things that made her wonderful but I think her experience her continued education and she had a very um, good way of learning from the consumers as well and she would always kind of say that to me and say you know you're teaching me things here and yeah I think little things like they asked my opinion about things and you know about their processes and there was always like wanting to get feedback about that. It just made me feel valued and I think when I felt valued as well, then that helped my self-esteem really. Um, and it helped me get better. It, it's, it's funny because a lot of people I don't think realize the power of that relationship. My first clinician was the first person in my life who ever told me that they were proud of me and that was massive for me. Um, and so I needed to, you know, I was kind of, for one, for one moment I had someone who was proud of me and who was kind of on my side. And so I think there were lots of times when I could have slid further backwards and I probably didn't do it because I wanted to keep their, their pride in me. So that's a massive thing when you don't have that. And I think Maybe a lot of people don't realise, a lot of clinicians maybe don't realise the people they're dealing with probably have never felt that emotion. Either they've never had somebody who thinks they're amazing and who thinks they're smart and articulate. Um, you know, there's a lot of negativity that's geared towards people with borderline. And they can be so powerful by just actually doing some really strength-based work with people. So strength-based is the key.